Hello everyone, welcome to Net DevOps channel. So in this video series, I'm going over all the core concept of Jinchat 2 with practical use cases. So basically, Jinchat 2 is a third party library in Python and widely used for templatizing the device configuration, which can be utilized either with Python or called inside the Ansible playbook. So if you're a DevOps or network security automation engineer, this is going to be a good video series for you. So just stick with me. Hopefully you will find this very useful and probably you can add this to your daily workflows. With that, let's jump into today's session. All right, I'm currently on the terminal of my virtual machine with the required dependencies loaded. So we'll be using Jinjat 2 along with Jinjat 2 CLI and PyAML. And these dependencies have installed through Poetry. And if you're interested to know how to set this up, I have created a full video on this topic and I will leave the link here for your reference. Now to start off with something simple, so we'll create a file name as basic underscore template dot j2. The extension would be j2 here. Let's type it as hello john. So here instead of john, we can have other names. So let's replace john with a variable and give it a name. So in Jinja2 template, we can define the placeholder using double curly bracket. And this act as a variable that can be replaced to an actual value while running the automation script. So to understand this better, let's take some practical examples here. So let's say interface, then interface name as gig 0 slash 0, then the IP address, then we should be given an IP address, then the subnet mask. This is a standard configurations on any network devices. So here the interface IP and the subnet mask are the variables defined under the double curly bracket. Now let's execute this code. So to render a Jinja2 template, we need a Python interpreter. However, we can use Jinja2 CLI to run the template directly. So the syntax would be Jinja2, then the template name. After that, we will define the value of each variable using hyphen D flag. So our first variable would be interface IP. So let's give it as 10.0.0.1. Then define the second variable with hyphen D and give some mask. So let's run it. So if you see the results, we can see the interface name and its corresponding IP address, which have provided as an input. Now imagine if you want to configure a bunch of interface, of course, each interface with different IP address and its mask. So to make this process more efficient and organized, we can introduce YAML file as input. So if you are not familiar with YAML or you want to dive deeper into a core concept, I have created a detailed video covering the YAML basics. So let's create a file called variables underscore YML, which will contain all the input data for the interface configuration. So let's specify the first key, which will be router underscore interface. Under this, we'll have the list of items for each interfaces. In YAML, the list starts with hyphen. So first, let's specify the interface name as a key and give the interface name. Then define the IP address and the subnet mask. Let's also create another list for the second interface and we'll update the details. So generally to configure multiple interfaces, we need to go through each interface and set up specific configuration. So in such cases, we can leverage for loop in Jinja, which is quite powerful. So let's see how to structure it. So in Jinja, the for loop start with single braces with percentile sign so for so here our key name is router underscore interface so in order to peel the data we can use for then the interface in router underscore interface which is similar like how it works in python and this will iterate the data through each interface so the first line of the config would be interface then the double curly bracket for the variable which we already seen then the variable name so here the variable name would be interface dot interface underscore name which is the key we have used in our yaml input then in the second line of the configuration would be ip address which would be like interface dot ip underscore address inside the table bracket and the same thing goes with the subnet mask so unlike python we need to close the loop in Jinja2 by giving end4 in a single curly bracket with a percentile. So hope it makes sense. 
So let's run our code here. So here we can see the configuration of each interface as per the YAML data. So basically, for loop allows us to generate the configuration for multiple interfaces without duplicating the code. So when we are working with the configuration, we often come across with the different scenarios that required a different configurations for each device type. So let's consider a network with a mix of routers and switches and each require a distinct configurations. So instead of creating separate template for each device type, we can use control structure to conditionally apply the settings based on the device type. So let's build a YAML file first and see how we can create corresponding Jinja2 template. So we'll start with the key named as network underscore devices. So under this key, we will list the items for each device type. For example, the first device type is router and we'll specify the router name along with its related configurations. Similarly, we will add the second item for a switch and the third item for the unknown device type. It's important to note that these fields are for demonstration purpose. The actual configuration can be modified based on the specific conditions. So that's the YAML file. Now how to build a smart template using Jinja2. So here we begin with a for loop to iterate over each device in the network device. So within loop, we can use if else conditions based on the device type of each device. So inside the if block, we'll check if the device dot device underscore type is equal to router, then we'll apply the router specific configuration. For other device type, we can use elif condition to check for switches. And finally, we'll use else statement that will handle unknown device types. Then we can close the if block, then we'll close the for loop as well. So when we run this code, we can see that the Jinja2 template has identified the device type correctly. And we can see the configuration of all the three device type based on the if conditions and the YAML input we have given. So just for testing, let's comment out the last two device type, then run the template again. And you can see the result that now it delivers only the router configurations. Now this can be elaborated further where we can have more criteria based on the device model or based on the certain data in the configuration file. So in summary, by adding the control structure in Jinja2, we essentially build an intelligence to our template and help to apply the right configuration to the right device during the configuration process. I hope you find this explanation helpful. With that, I will wrap up this video. Stay tuned for the next video where we will explore more advanced use cases in Jinja2. Thanks for watching and see you soon.